What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here. Uh, this is The Walking Dead, Season 6, Episode 13, The Same Boat. Very fitting title, um, because the sole purpose of this episode was showing how Carol and Paula are in the same boat. Um, but yeah, I really did enjoy this episode because it, it was a very nice character building episode. Uh, there are going to be a lot of people who are like, oh, this episode was boring, blah, blah. My brother is one of those people. I have to hear it all the time. It's very frustrating. But I don't care. <laughs> so, but yeah, it, sometimes you do have to kind of take a break. You know, not every week can be, oh, action, intensity, explosions. Sometimes you do have to take a little break, take a breath, say, okay, we need to build some character. We need to kind of let these characters develop. We can't just have them going through action with no character development at all. Um, and they do that very well. Uh, this this whole episode was set up very specifically um, to kind of show how Carol is really feeling through all of this. Because I think I speak for all of us when I say that we were all pretty certain that she was acting throughout most of that, um, you know, when they have her tied up and stuff like that. And I think for most of the time she was, you know, when she was crying, when she was acting all sad, you know, she, I think that was acting. But I truly do think she's dealing with some issues right now. Um, and I think, you know, the two examples to help prove that point are, one, when they left the room to go take care of the walkers uh, to set up the meeting point. Um, as soon as they leave, she, like... And then starts scratching on the ground like she catches her breath, kind of resumes her uh, <laughs> her badass persona, and uh, then works on getting out. Um, and the the thing that I think shows that she is struggling right now is that before all of this, one of the, in my opinion, one of the best scenes, and I hate the fact that they had to explain it because. I felt like they showed it so well, because I, I, I can't remember if they showed it from a first person point of view, or they showed her holding the gun up to the guy, aimed at his head, and then slowly panned down and shot him in the arm. I thought that was perfect way to show it. Later on when she's talking to Maddie, she, Maggie, she's like, I could have killed him, but I didn't. I'm just like, I already knew that. You didn't have to tell me. You did so well in showing it. You don't always have to, you know, So sometimes... I get that not everybody's going to understand what that meant, but just trust your audience, you know, trust your audience will understand what that opening scene meant, um, because, you know, that scene was great, when I saw it, I was like, holy crap, they said so much in just that one scene, no words were needed, and then they still used words later, but anyway, um, that's just, I, I do have a few nitpicks with this episode, but I will get to that later, um, so yeah, but I think this was the perfect episode to show how Carol's feeling. And having a villain like Paula kind of shows what Carol's worried about because Paula's pretty much what she's worried about becoming. Uh, and I love how they drew comparisons between the two, how, you know, Paula said, yeah, you know, I, I, dealt, with, uh, I, I dealt with abuse too. She talks about her boss. Um, and then, you know, tar started talking about how she lost count at double digits and she she just stopped caring. And I think that kind of hit home for Carol because at some point she did stop caring. And I think after what happened with Morgan, uh, her willingness to kill Morgan to try to kill the wolf uh, that nearly got both of them killed, I think that's when she kind of started to question, who am I? You know, I, I almost just killed you know, one of Rick's friends, a guy who, he may be wrong, but he's not an enemy. I tried to kill him just because I wanted to kill that wolf. You know, I think it really did kind of get to her. Um, so anyway, you know, that's, I kind of, I liked seeing that side of her. Kind of showing more of the philosophy of this world. What what are you going to do to, to survive? You know, what's it going to take for you to survive? Um, of course, at the same time, this was probably the worst time to be questioning yourself. 
um, as far as like, you know, you're you're in this situation where if you're not willing to kill, you may die. They may kill you first. And so to have that question of conscience right now, it's like, this is the worst time in the world. Um, it would be like, you know, questioning, is it wrong to kill walkers as a walker is bearing down on you? It's like, can you question that another time after you're alive and for sure alive? Uh, but yeah, overall, there's not a whole lot to bring from this episode. You know, there were a couple good moments. I thought uh, Paula's speech about you... You know, the, what was it, the carrot boiled in one was hard, then became soft. The egg in another was fragile, became hard. And then the coffee bean completely changed the water. She's like, you want to be the coffee beans. And uh, totally makes sense from my point of view. But I do like that speech, and it kind of does show her mindset that, you know, you could either be softened or hardened by what's going on, or you can completely change your situation. And you can tell that's exactly what she's done. She could have become hard. She could have become soft. She could have just, you know, crumbled into a little ball. Or she could have turned into somebody who was going to make the best out of a situation. But what she ended up doing is just completely changing her point of view, her, her surrounding, her environment to fit her and not change at all. Um, I thought very, very good analogy and very good kind of for Carol to take forward. Um, Something tells me that's going to be something that pops up in, you know, like in a future episode. She's going to be brewing coffee and she's going to look at it like, you know, like thinking back to what uh, Paula said. Um, but yeah, you know, overall, some good moments. Um, I thought the end, I, there were parts I liked, parts I didn't as far as the ending. Uh, it was very intense, but I thought what happened with Paula uh, and Carol at the end, how their story ended, felt like they forced the intensity just a little bit. Um, like, you know, Carol has the gun pointed at her, and there's a walker right behind her, and it comes off the spike to try to get her. I'm just like, see, first of all, one, Maggie could be killing the walkers right now. You know, she could be stabbed that one so it can't kill her, stabbed that, so we don't even have to worry about the walkers, you know, like, we don't have to worry, oh no, there's a walker about to get Carol, she could have stabbed them, and then after, um, I thought the, the scene where Maggie and Shell started fighting, and then she, like, s sliced the shirt, I'm gonna talk about her in a second, but then Carol comes around the corner, bam, right in the head, it's like, holy crap, um, that was well done, and then Paul, Paul stands up, holding her shoulder, um, and Maggie's, or Carol's just like, you know, I, I was scared, of this and she's like edging closer and closer and cl I'm like seriously would you really do that like does that make any sense to, to you people because to me I was just like you're just setting it up so we're gonna be like oh no Carol might die just for Carol to not die you know like it just felt like they were forcing the intensity where they really could have you know, it could have had a moment where Carol maybe dropped the gun or something like that, or, you know, something that really could have happened. But Carol, as smart as she is, I just don't think she would just walk up to her, you know, and get within arm's length of her for her to knock the gun away and then fight and then possibly die in the process. Um, although it did set up for a very gruesome ending instead of just a straight headshot. Uh, you know, getting impaled on a spike and then getting your face eaten off was pretty freaking gruesome, but, um, yeah, I just, I don't know, the, the one thing that, I, that did kind of pop into my mind is that maybe she didn't want to just straight up murder her, so she gave her the, ch so she gave her the chance to fight back, so that way she, in her mind, she's justifying it as self-defense when she killed her, that is the only thing, it popped into my mind, you know, after, I had complained about it a little bit. I was just like, seriously, that scene didn't make any sense. And then, like, 30 minutes later, I'm like, wait, they could have done it for that reason. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, why take the risk? You know, why why take that risk of I you could possibly die in this situation instead of just killing her from distance, you know? So, it had a little bit of a problem with it, not 
so much that I hated the episode or anything like that, but, you know, it is kind of a, a nitpick that did bug me for a little bit. Um, but it does beg the question, you know, is Carol kind of losing her edge? Uh, is that why she got closer, or was it just poor directing? Anyway. So, yeah, you know, but that after that was really good, because Carol, you know, makes her voice sound like Paula, so she draws the guys in, you know, bringing them to the killing floor, and then... They're all in there. She lights a cigarette, drops it, <laughs> flames, killed them all. It was brilliant. Um, pr pretty freaking crazy scene, too. It's <laughs> just like, because they're sitting there kind of like off to the side, and she starts smoking a cigarette. Like, what's going to happen? Like, is this like the, one of those typical cliches where she like smoking her cigarette? Like, this may be the last one I ever get. And then she drops it, and it's like, and you know, like, Carol. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it was it was a very well done scene. And then uh, Rick and the group show up uh, with what's his name, the the random guy that they kept alive. Um, it's kind of funny because all of these characters just <laughs> it felt like they were going to be bigger parts of the show. You know, like, Paula seemed like she was going to be a big part of the show because of kind of the, the sort of, I can't really think of the right word. It's a type of relationship. It's almost like a, a love-hate type thing but with her and Carol because she respects Carol because of the similarities they have, but at the same time she despises her because she thinks that Carol's weak and um, you know not able to make it through when obviously Carol's just acting, but... You know, it feels like if Carol had revealed her true self earlier, I think they would have kind of connected a bit more, and it felt like there was potential for more with her character. Um, but then this guy that they they shot at the end of last episode to keep him from escaping, the whole time they were keeping him alive for a trade. And even afterwards, it's like, keep him alive so he can give you some information. And they start styling off, you know, we are Negan, are you ready for a world of fun, or something like that, and then... Rick's just like, shut up, and bam, shoots him in the head. It's like, Ick. you realize you could have used him, right? Like, it's very clear that this was not the entire group. Like, there's no way. Do you really think that Negan's group, you know, whether whether or not there is some main guy behind it all, main Negan, which I feel like there still is, but anyway, it kind of feels like this was just one part of the group. You know, they took down, yeah, they took down the ammunition stash. They took down this other kind of, I don't really know what Paula's group was. But clearly there are more people because Paula brought him back up from somewhere. So why not keep him so he can help you out? He can give you more information about them. But no, he just straight up kills them and just like, Rick is losing it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny because last season and kind of the beginning of this season you know I, f I forget when he right the uh the scene where they fought back against the herd of walkers and he realized the alexandrians can be saved and he realized okay maybe daryl and michonne were right maybe we do need to try to save people he finally realized that and you're like thank you like you finally wise you, you wised up but now he's still making stupid decisions based on like not, not not really frustration, but based on like his uh, maybe worry is the right right word. He just straight up killed a guy that could have been helpful, and it kind of makes you wonder: Is he losing it? You know, like yeah, he he wised up to the one thing, but he's still not exactly getting it right now because that that was kind of a stupid decision. You know, it's. It's not very often he makes stupid decisions, but this one was kind of really stupid. So, don't really know what exactly is going on there, um, how much of it is he's just doing it to be safe, and how much of it is he's just that far gone as far as we need to take care of this group, we need to take them out. And he doesn't even think ahead to, oh, there's probably more of them. You know, it seems like he's not thinking straight when it comes to Negan's group. Um, it feels like maybe he's just taking them a bit too lightly. Um, 
So, you know, overall, good episode. Uh, really did enjoy uh, a lot of the back and forth between Carol and Paula. Uh, I thought this episode in particular for Carol and Maggie was a good moment for them um, because, you know, Maggie with the baby, uh, Carol's kind of, she doesn't really like the fact that Maggie is doing all this stuff with a baby because she lost her own child. Uh, and on top of that, we got to see like a good bit of uh, Shell, the lady who lost her own child. We got to see a bit of Maggie in her as well, uh, and kind of the worry that she had, because you know losing a baby is a very traumatic thing, and why Maggie is out there, I'll never know. But it is kind of like that they were trying to push that further and further, as far as you know, making sure Maggie stays back, and she really kind of got the message at the end, and you know, told Glenn, I don't think I can do this anymore. Uh, so I think they handled that scene very well. Um, so yeah, overall, good episode. A few nitpicks near the end, but what show isn't going to have nitpicking every now and then? Uh, so overall, enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, what do you think is happening next? What do you think these people mean by We Are Negan? <laughs> what is going on there? Uh, a lot of questions to be answered. And uh, what, where do you think the season's headed? What do you think the big fun finale is going to be? Uh, leave a like and subscribe for more Walking Dead. We'll see you at the next review. Peace out.